Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Welcome <laughs> to Royal Pass. Yeah, I'm going to try that one out. What is your guys's, um, and don't just go straight to the Joker, but what's your guys's favorite Batman villain? I got Batman on the brain. Because I would have to say besides Joker, I mean, I think Joker's, I love Bane. I love me some Bane, but also Scarecrow. I think Scarecrow's a really great character too. Or if we're going to go technical, then I think Superman, because in Dark Knight Returns, he oh, is. Now. Yeah. So I'll give you guys a second to think that I don't, I don't know. I don't know how long this villain stuck around. And I know that there's been several different both villains and heroes throughout comic books with this name. But there was somebody, this is maybe back in the 90s, Sandman. He was like made as like it's when Batman started to get real dark, but he was like made out of sand, this dude. And he had this weird like fish type helmet i don't know how long he stuck around but i remember being a kid and reading this arc with this guy and it was it was really it was really wild it was but and i don't and i don't know who did it but um it's it stuck out to me that's what's coming into my mind right now i, got what I, I don't have. even know how long this guy stuck around they got what i have right here so okay we'll look look talks. it up i'm gonna look it up real quick look it up Oh, you're supposed to talk now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm swimming because I'm just, man, like, um, oh, man, I was really into him, although I don't, I, I just know him from the animated series, actually. I don't think, I think they did some runs with him. I want to say Norm Greyfogel did. Ooh a run with him the phantasm the um uh mask of the phantasm mask of phantasm is based yeah. on um i just really liked how he looked but uh and then uh i, I there's so much it's just he's on the tip of my tongue um uh, what was his name? What, uh, it was um, Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, I think, did it. Um, the Holiday Killer? It was his, like, cousin. It was, it was Bruce's cousin. Um, oh, Hush? Hush. Oh, okay. All right. That's fine. To each his own. <laughs> um, Hush was good. I mean, you what, makes, me what makes a good Batman villain? That's the question. Like, what makes a good Batman villain? He has to they're usually so they're usually so one dimensional. That's why everybody picks the Joker. Yeah. Well, because I they're pick... such one dimensional characters as the villains. Okay. Well, first off, Joker is not one dimensional. That man contains multitudes. No, that's what I'm saying. That's no, why that's everybody why picks Joker. the Joker. Joker is like the yeah. only oh, one he's, sure. he's the only one that's not one dimensional. This is kind of the thing with Batman villains is that they're that they all are all one they all represent something, some very one-dimensional they aspect. All have, they all have a shtick, and they're sticking shtick. to that shtick. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I can't... I'm going to agree with you, but only because I'm not sure... I'm not sure I, I can really debate that right now. I, I think that his rogues gallery next to The Flash is probably the strongest out of like the DC characters. I'm not saying that those are the best villains, but I think his rogues gallery is really, really strong. And I think what works about it is because one of them, oh, I don't know. All of them are kind of like a little bit of aspects of who Batman could be. 
Yes. Like they really, it, those are all like bastardized versions of Batman. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you have like, Oh, like your lack of discernment, say with Harvey Dent and Two Face. Mm -hmm. Like, so he's making all of his judgment calls based off of like the flip of the coin, Scarecrow. Like, yes, Batman uses fear, but like he doesn't use fear alone. He uses fear as a tool, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I could probably keep going, but I'm not going to because, you know, this is not the podcast. I just feel like Marvel villains are better. They oh. are better. Like, oh, I 100. I, it's the villain. Like, they're so multi dimensional. They are better. They no. really are better. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Like in my top five, probably three of those slots are taken up by Marvel villains. But Marvel villains, uh, they burn fast and they go away quickly. Marvel villains are pretty forgettable, actually. I think a lot of times I'm like, wait, who the crap is this villain again? It's like mm. I don't remember them from there, like from some. Like, don't get me wrong. You got your Doctor Dooms. You got your Galactuses. You got your like Red. Your Magnetos. Come Magnetos on. Magnetos is cool. Magneto is really really cool. Yeah, saber tooth. I mean. And the saber tooth is cool. I'm not yeah, saying there's all a lot, man. Bad. Baron Zemo. I mean, man, like no, those are those are all great villains, but like I tell you, there are so many times where like some bank heist is being pulled and like Ash Master. I mean, I mean, like, forgive me. Because we can just go through like the DC stuff right now. Okay. Riddler, Joker, Penguin, uh Catwoman, Catwoman, um, Poison Ivy, Poison Doctor Ivy. Freeze, Captain Cold, Lex Luthor, Brainiac, Grodd, Zod, uh, Mirror Master, um, Black Manta, Reverse Flash. Yo 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 yo, Black Manta is dope, man. He's dope. So I don't know what Black who's what where who's Black Man what what series Black Manta show up. Aquaman. Black, 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 Man. Black Manta is like, Aquaman. Oh, he's yeah. Aquaman. The thing about Black Manta is every iteration of him is so good. Yeah. His iteration on Super Friends from the eighties from the seventies super good. His iteration like in video in the video game there's like a Justice for All video game his so good um is he an atlantean what's his what's his deal his his uh origin story has kind of changed from time to time much like mr aquaman himself but m the consensus is that in some way aquaman wronged his dad uh either he accidentally killed his dad or he did kill his dad because his dad was being a jerk um or his dad was drowning and aquaman didn't save him because he didn't see him or something like that and then black man ends up super angry He's just a human who's like declared war on Aquaman. And he actually, I think he kills Aquaman's son. Arthur. Does he have gadgets or a suit or something? I yeah, just don't he's remember got this guy. Big suit is like all black and he's got like a huge silver helmet with these two huge red eyes. They shoot laser beams. They shoot laser beams. Oh, oh yeah. He's okay. in the movie, which I love okay. that movie, but he didn't really need to be in it. Like, okay. I mean, that's, that movie's so bad, it's good, and so good, it's bad, but it's, um, he didn't really Are you need talking it. about the You're talking about the Aquaman movie? Yeah, yeah. I, I never saw it. I, I, I can't, really. Aquaman is just not my guy. I've never I, seen I, it either, I, man. I can't, like, he's not my guy. I <laughs> hard Aquaman fan. I Seriously? love Aquaman. No, oh, he's... man, you know what it is? You're just a I, contrarian, I knew... that's all. No, 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 I, I love Aquaman. I my tongue. I knew, hands down. Okay. Forgive me, Rachel Ghoul, man. That's oh, my no, man. Yeah, Rachel Ghoul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I was, was going to say too. Oh, that, that's, that's a, my that, man. That is a, a multi-dimensional like, character. I was like, it was like, you know, what I felt like I felt like I'm going on a trip. I'm counting all my kids to get in the car. I'm 30 minutes away from home. I'm like, there's a kid Russell. missing in the car. I just is know. Russell, is I, Ross Al Ghul like actually a villain, though? Is Ross Al Ghul actually a villain? He is he embodies an actual evil? He embodies Rachel Ghul actually embodies an actual evil of this idea that, like, no, we need to kill off half the planet, half the human life. Like right. the, the the world is overpopulated. We need to kill off half the like no, like three quarters or seven eighths, whatever of human life to restore natural balance. He, re he represents an actual okay. evil. Like he is, okay. he's complicated. And like, I love him and Batman's relationship is mm -hmm. one of my favorite relationships in all of comic books. Yeah. Um, just the detective. He just called, he doesn't call him. Oh, yeah, he saw the detective. So good. Detective. So good. And yeah, hands down. That's hands mm -hmm. down. 
And Cyprian, I truly, as God's sakes, I try so hard not to be contrarian. I love Aquaman. And you know, I don't even love the bearded, crazy Aquaman. I love the clean cut, like the orange, orange uh, shirt. and green. Yeah, wow. no, man, he's dope. Wow. He, he's the king of the oceans. And like, you know, like that dude, his power set, I mean, people sleep on him, but like, I don't know. He's he can I, fly, he can fly, can't he? Can he fly? Or am I thinking Submariner? So, so forgive me. I was just about to say, man, God bless you, Cyprian. God bless you. Because <laughs> I, was just, I was just about to say, let's get into it. Because you know what? Submariner is way superior to Aquaman. Submariner, no... Imperious Rex. Imperious. I've, been, I've been a, you know what? This is how, this how much of a Submariner fan I am. Mm-hmm. When I went through a whole period of time, I was like, I don't care anymore. Like I got rid of whatever and I was out of my mind. My Submariners number one and two were like some of the only Ooh. comics I kept. Wow, cool. Ooh. And like from the 60s, Submariner one and two. Yeah. Like, yeah who yeah. created Submariner? How's that? Who created Submariner? Is that Jack and Stan? I want to say it's Jack and Stan. It's super old. It's Stan. Series super old. No, he's one, he's like one of those holdovers from um from the old 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 days mm-hmm. like he he fought the original human torch not i mean Storm. he's like a true anti-hero i mean submariner yeah. is just you know because because no. i remember back in the day someone had done like a fan fandom type of promotion and i was like it, it was so perfect because they were like you know what daniel day lewis is submariner and my face melted i was like oh. man Daniel Day Lewis as Submariner would have been insane. You could pick any yeah. moment. I mean, this whole thing of starting off with him just, you know, destroying like a World War II fleet of, of submarines and then him just kind of like launching havoc on the main. I mean, there's just so much you could do with him. Just mm-hmm. ooh, Submariner. That's the I feel like he's the answer movie. to. Uh, did he come before or after Aquaman? Before. Because if. <laughs> Before. If Aquaman came way before, before. okay. See, and then then this is why I really have a problem with Aquaman, because to to come out with Aquaman after Submariner and make him so much worse. No, no, no. <laughs> this door swings both ways. This door definitely what do you swings mean? both ways. What do you mean? How, what do Deadpool, you mean? Deadpool is a is a poor man's death stroke. Like yeah, that's true. Even Sla- it's Wade Wilson instead of Slade Wilson. Yeah, right. And, both of these characters do the both Marvel and DC both do this thing where Moon Knight is the answer to Batman. It move Moon Knight is Marvel's Batman, and um, oh, Moon Knight's ter- terrible compared to Batman. Come on. Well, I mean, they're a little apples and oranges. Y like you have the mystical element to Moon Knight while Batman. Well, is- hold on, Andrew. Hold on. <laughs> I'm sure you have some. I'm sure you've got something an ace up your sleeve, like a formal actual document that you've absconded from something but is he really marvels batman because i get like the aesthetic of it and i could see where someone's like well yeah they were just trying to find some sort of answer to the batman but like isn't tony stark kind of more like marvels batman Mm, that's interesting i think bruce maybe you know there's probably an argument to be made there and I can't say that I'm right or I'm wrong about this. I have always been always within the comic community that I hang around in. It's always been colloquially known that Moon Knight is the answer to Batman. And that's one of those things that I've always heard it. I've never really sat down and thought about it because, I mean, I'm not a huge Moon Knight fan. I think he's cool. He's in West Coast Avengers for a while and he's pretty cool in there. He looks cool. He looks cool. Yeah. But like he's he's mystical. There's like a whole thing right there. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole thing. Like, sure. Like Tony Stark, one for one, is the equivalent of I think Batman in 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 the kind of hierarchy and order of Marvel teams, that make, Marvel universe. That make Captain America Iron Man or uh, Superman. Yeah, I would say so to yeah. some degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yep. the problem is, is that people want to go on too much of a superficial kind of like comparison oh moon knight has a cape batman has a cape right. like, but the thing is is you have to look at them in the context of like their of their of, of their their universe their cosmology interesting right and so 
billionaire, billionaire, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like intelligence, intelligence, you know, technology, technology, you know, leader, leader, anti-hero, mm-hmm. anti-hero. Like both of them have this, especially later Iron Man, and not even like the Robert Downey Jr., but like, as you know, like him being an alcoholic and that kind of like, that mm-hmm. that's what Robert Downey Jr. really brought out, that kind of, that like kind of jerky aspect. But that's always been there for Tony Stark. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, because I heard, I can't remember what it was, but somebody was just talking about Robert Downey Jr. was the worst thing to happen to Iron Man or something like that. I can't remember. They said, no, like, oh, well, they, they made him a jerk. They Well, no, he's a fantastic. And, like, for the first time. I he is care. Iron Man. Yeah. I mean, he is. I mean, but um, somebody said, like, uh, you know, oh, well, they made him a jerk. He's like, he's always kind of been a jerk. He's always had a guy complex. Mm-hmm. He's always been like, I am the guy to make that call. I, yeah. He's always been that guy. And that person, Has that person actually ever read any Iron Man comics, though? You know, I don't remember. And I don't remember where I heard it. Because as far as like the early 90s, I want to say, or maybe the mid 90s, whenever Mark Wade started writing Captain America, um, there's this whole arc where uh, Tony Stark is able to access all information, blah, 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 yeah. blah. Mm-hmm. He takes everybody's, his identity out of everybody's head because too many people have found out that Tony Stark and Iron Man are the same person. Because for a long time, people didn't know that Tony Stark was Iron Man for like a long, long, long time. Um, a long time. And Captain America found out and he was really like angry at, Ca- at Iron Man. And he was like, that was an absolute breach of trust. You had absolutely no right to do that. And then like a quick, pretty quickly. Oh, and that's one of the, that's one of my least favorite things is this whole, like, that's not one of my least favorite. I get where it comes from, but this whole contention between Captain America and Iron Man, it, it started a long time ago. It obviously like came to head in civil war and they're still like eager. Writers are so eager still to come back to that. And it makes me so mad. And actually like when they rebooted all of Marvel this is so sad it's so sad to a degree i don't really care that much but um as that as the multiverse was collapsing in story and jonathan hitman was getting ready to write his secret war story all of the universes were collapsing the very last thing in the original marvel 616 which is the marvel universe prime the 616 universe the very last thing that captain america and iron man are doing is they're fighting as like buildings are falling, as the ultimate Marvel universe is like coming into battle, the 616 universe. It's like that is the legacy you end this, like yeah. You know the problem I have with that though is uh, I the problem I have with that is and I think it betrays fundamentally the character of Captain America. Like hmm. Captain America, unless he's you know stopping Tony from some sort of like miss misaligned ideological like issue reason like i can't imagine him doing that like because that sounds like i'm fighting you out of pure hatred and spite and vengeance and like i just like i hate you. like that's not captain america he doesn't that you know there is that potential though because that's what happened at the end of civil war at the end of civil war like that emt grabbed or firefighter i can't remember it's been a while grabbed captain america's arm as he's getting ready to kill tony stark Mm-hmm. And like he was standing there with the shield. Tony Stark was like, do it, Cap, whatever, like you win. And then the EMT grabbed his arm and he was like, stop. And Cap's like, I don't want to hurt you. He's like, are you kidding me? And then they turn around and the whole city's like laid to destruction. And there's like people everywhere because of their fighting. And Cap's like, oh my gosh, I was wrong. And like, I surrender, I'm done. Like I lost. And like, that's how that ends. And that, that, but that's Mark. Yeah, that, that proves my point. Yeah. yeah, it kind of does. As of, <laughs> that proves my point. Yeah, but I mean, is it is it is it an allusion to the the constant tension between, let's say, government and industry? Mm-hmm. You know that like they they're working together, but they're like government is constantly trying to put industry under its thumb, and industry is constantly trying to subvert government. And that the idea, you know what I mean? Like on both sides, they both view each other as like enemies, but then they're both having to work. They have to work together for them to yeah. both accomplish their aims. You this know what I mean? So interesting to me because, this is so interesting because this gets into this whole thing about, you know, I mean, I'm all for, and I, the reason why now, the reason why I find comics so fascinating is because to me, they're this 
cipher by which I'm able to kind of understand myself as a younger man and understand and even kind of like begin to understand society on a broader scale in regards of how we perceive institutions, how we perceive mm. archetypes, right? I mean, because mm. it's are like our mythos. So this whole thing with government mm -hmm. and even the way that characters are have been like shifted, it, it's like, I don't know, we're, we're probably really off track, but I really want to go into that a little bit because yep. I, I, I think, I think there's something to be said for, there's been an intentional, like we all know that there that certain forces are are seeking to use these archetypes, these characters, these these mytholo these these kind of American Western mythologies to facilitate propaganda. Now I know someone's gonna say, well, they always have back in the day, cap killing, you know, Japs and Nazis, whatever. Sure. But like we can get into that. But I think what we've seen in regards of characters with sexuality and explicit like wokeness, it's like they're, they're, it's so overt and explicit it's lost any not only lost any credibility it's lost any effic efficacy in really being able to speak to and influence care like culture narrative like on the kind of like meta scale right amen mm -hmm. that that being aside there's something to be said for what batman as like a golem you know what I'm saying? What Batman as like a golem like represented. In in think about think about like Frank Miller's Dark Knight. Like like I'm thinking about it, and I'm thinking I, I'm thinking about like people can't really understand unless you were there. There was just this weird thing in the air when that came out. Like so like like that encapsulated so much of the fears, the confusion, the angst, anger, all the things that was going on in like the 80s. Like it, it did it in such a way and specifically through the, the character, the, the mythology of Batman that allowed you to kind of like, that was my first time looking, like that, that was my first time having any sort of like, oh, I think I understand how like adults feel or like or how like a grandparent feels. Just that kind of like, I never put myself in the shoes of like an adult conservative up until that comic. I, I just, I, I had no framework. Hmm. I had, I had, it's, and see, do you, it's kind of, it's kind of like interesting like to hear that, right? So are you referencing like, so the two psychologists, I can't remember who they're talking about, who are talking about the Joker, mm -hmm. who are like, who are basically one saying like, you know, oh, like the liberal guys. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's indicative of society. Like Batman mm -hmm. is actually creating the Joker every time he goes out. It's actually more Batman's fault than the Joker. Mm -hmm. And the other person's like, no, like you're like this absolute insanity. Like, and then the Joker ends up killing everyone. <laughs> like, I mean, like, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, yes, yes, but from my perspective at that time, like like looking at it, it really primed me to begin to, this is probably all boring for everyone, but like for me, it, okay. it really primed me to move away from the kind of like incredibly infantile, ignorant, superficial, kind of like anarchy and chaos that I was embracing Via okay like like via uk82 exploited like just like yeah forget you margaret thatcher and, and ronald reagan like with the english accent like sure it, it helped me really move out of that and really be into like you know what like yeah this sucks to have something like messed up because some like it was the first time i was ever like oh i could kind of see us being a problem like us like talking about okay you know what I mean? Okay, so you and, were a mutant. I was a mutant, right? Yeah. And, and okay. like, and, and I and and seeing that from that my first, I didn't change. It's not like I became like whatever, but it definitely prepped me to move into the skinhead movement, you right? Know, you became father. You What's became, that? You became a son of Batman. I, be, I became son of Batman in the yeah. comic. In the yeah. comic, the mutants become sons of Batman because yeah. Batman comes and beats up the mutant leader and yep. they all become 
the yep. sons of batman yep yep, yep. i mean it may, like like it, it went from just this kind of like it, it definitely went from a, a it, it definitely went from just like in that that mindless youthful hedonist chaos like anarchy like wrong inappropriate understand anarchy right not jacques Lille, but like but like you know just just mindless anarchy to like yeah you know um and, and that was the whole thing about being uh, a skinhead for me it was just like there was this this i don't want to say code although there was a code but just a realization of you know um street justice like someone's gotta like bring some things into check you know I, I, it's just interesting to me because it, like i find it discouraging and and much more difficult now for a person for someone my age now or well for someone in this time period to have that experience and and a healthy interaction and maybe even get some healthy influence from comics now the way i was able to then if that makes sense because well it's it's the lack of order you know like i think that that's one thing about that's unique, like in thinking about Frank Miller, even the aesthetic, all of it is that although, although there is, you know, there is a, a darkness to it, although it's like there's there's many inversions, like it's such an ordered universe. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's this high degree of order, but it also is a better reflection. And I think that that's what started that in, in comics for sure is like it's actually a better reflection of reality. And so it's almost like you read it or you 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 look at something and it ref you you see your own reality in it right like the archetype you really see reality in it and then from there you can start to flesh out the other elements as you start looking at the way these characters behave and whatnot but now like when you add in all this wokeness when you are purposely trying to insert all of these and and to actually move people you actually are less able to do it because people look at it and they don't see reality Mm -hmm. like they don't see their reality the good the bad the whatever they look at the hero and they're like can't relate mm -hmm. right i just i simply can't relate mm -hmm. and as opposed to the idea of like okay let me give you this and and you can relate to it like it's true you know that it's true and then even if you're crafting the story and even if you're trying to lead somebody in a direction at least then you've got them right and i think that that's really that's the issue with with so much of this like attempt at programming that it's actually failing and it's actually confusing people because people really want to i think see themselves in these stories but you have to force yeah. it it's you you have to force it because you don't see yourself right so then you have to become something else yeah other than imagine. you seeing yourself in the story if like the x-men were jerks like right i'm surprised there hasn't been some like mutant lives matter or something like that like in like the story of being like well what happens when the mutants no longer are content with like being peace like being peaceable and like yeah that's already covered with like magneto blah 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 i get that but like it's like what happens when xavier's done with it when xavier's right. like you know what no it is time to actually like well i mean not to not to geek out on but isn't that is not the run they did with cyclops though i mean he yeah he became an extremist you know yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting to me because that's one of the things where I'm too far removed to, to really want to speak any further on it because I just, I'm sure there have been some, well, I'm not sure. I have to give the benefit of the doubt and assume that there's been some good runs and there's still, there's still writers who are really trying to not just pay their bills and kind of like, you know, just yeah. spin the wheels. But the thing is, is there's so much that you can do to really not just have something to say, but flesh some things out and to really, um, for as cheesy as this sounds, like challenge people, you know, sure. because, because, because that's the thing, that's the thing about literature, it's the thing about comics, it's the thing about the ability to, through narrative, really bring about honest questions. The key word there is honest. Mm -hmm. and I think yes. that I think that's what's been lacking um, is is you know that explicit 
move towards propaganda and and you know um how did you phrase it uh cyprian um programming you know yeah. like it's so explicit it just it takes you out of it, it there's, there's just a complete lack of honesty and so it, it loses it's, it's it loses its ability to function i think as it as it's really intended to do beyond entertaining which is to you know facilitate kind of questioning and i mean that's that's something that isn't that crazy that's something stan lee was trying to i mean that's why he did x-men right that's why jack kirby did black panther like yeah. and and again in the best of ways to bring about some questioning about things and um i think that lack of honesty is what we're really kind of running up and it's take it out of the genre of comic put it into the genre of movies now or like whatever it's just like one narrative is being presented and maybe that's the problem father is it's now only entertainment mm -hmm. it's not really like trying to push anything mm -hmm. i mean you still have your you still have your pockets i think mr miracle like by tom yeah. king like that is not like a mainstream it was mainstream successful but it wasn't like action oriented what whatsoever it was really just <laughs> mr miracle well, you know i mean this is i remember I mean, years ago, 15 plus years ago, um, the tattoo shop I was working at the time, and this is, man, 15, like, man, I'm so, I don't even know how old I am anymore. It's, it's longer <laughs> than 15 years ago. Like, <laughs> you know, it was just starting to happen where tattoo shops were quote unquote having like art shows, right? And I remember talking with my wife about this at the time. I was just like, so, I don't know, not disgusted, but just disenchanted, just jaded. I was over it because I realized it was like, everything was just, um, forgive me for getting X-rated in this moment, but just everything was just like masturbation. Like yeah. there was no, there was no real seeking asking of questions like because look you can do a painting of a reaper and you can you can utilize that image in such a way that you're actually trying to say something or ask something and 99.9 percent .9 of the guys are just like doing some that, that looks tough cool or like you, wh whatever it was like whatever the situation was and that's one of the things that I always um i always you know and call me pretentious art guy whatever but it always kind of kept me on the periphery not not in a way of like i'm i'm too cool and obscure for school it was literally like yeah you know i i just can't get into this even at times if i want to to make more money because i got to feed my kids it was like there's something in me that I always struggled with just the superficiality of it in regards of okay you have an aesthetic but it, it's lacking any honesty. There's, there's really no intent. You're not really, you have no concept of symbol truly. You have no concept of being able to communicate through symbol. And so therefore me looking at your picture of just, you know, random, random images and quote unquote symbols thrown together with no cohesive statement, no cohesive, you know, honest questioning. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just, I'd rather not see anything at all. You know what I mean? Sure. And, and, and that's why masturbation is like the perfect term there because it's just like you're using this energy for the all the wrong purposes you know what i'm saying and i think this is kind of where th this is why it, it's funny the last conversation i had with i was with all my my three older boys it's like you can only talk about marvel movies and like stuff for so long at this point even though we're doing it but, but it's different like you can only talk about it for so long because now without like a heavy critique because it, it's totally those first couple of years of just seeing over the top graphics and it's great to see a character you've loved come to life awesome but what begins to start missing are the deeper questionings and even the purpose in which like you read at least why I read comics at the time, you know? Um, and it just starts becoming, this is how I've been feeling about some of the stuff, you know, like it's one of the reasons why I didn't watch Eternals. It's just like- I'm, I think I'm done with that movie. I didn't see, I didn't see it either. I didn't see it. It's made me like, you know what? It's the Watchers. 
It's eh. the Watchers. It's is, the, is it even the Watchers? It's the oh, are you talking about Watchers from like Enoch, Book of Enoch? Yeah, it's like, the Book of Enoch. It's yeah. like it's like the wokiest, wokiest, woke, like, like I don't know, and I don't know much about it. And it's it's a bummer because that's all Jack Kirby. The Eternals is Jack Kirby. And it, it really bums me out that I'm like, well, I'm I'm probably not gonna watch this. Like I think I'll be at peace with and you know, spoiler everyone for the next like five seconds if you haven't seen eternals but i guess they introduced black knight at the end of it which would be cool that's cool like i'm down i'm in for that but like all that other stuff like i just don't know how much i need to see it you well, know it's I could, uninspired it i is. feel like like what we're talking about is a is a lack of inspiration like the the the, the fact that there's no content there's right? been, like we've we have all the tools to, to of, of aesthetic tools but there's no inspiration there's an equation that you really just have to plug p- things into now. That's and it true. wasn't that way for a long time and whatever. And I even see it now with like that freaking like new Sonic movie coming out that they're like, they've introduced Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. Oh, the, come on, man. The second one. The second... <laughs> there's a big, there's a big Sonic fan base, father. Like, huge, yeah, unfortunately. So, but then they introduced like a character from the canon, like two new characters from the canon. And it's just like, so I'm starting to see this whole like, okay, this is just like a formula. Everybody's picking up on mm-hmm. the formula, which is why, if I may argue, no spoilers because Father hasn't seen it. Why I like the Batman so much? I thought that the Batman was it was a little bit different, not a lot, because it is still produced by Hollywood, so they're only going to allow it to be so different. But it's different in a way that's like, okay, this does not feel like a Marvel movie. Like this doesn't feel like them trying to copy some other kind of like weird success. They're actually kind of going and doing some boundaries. They're kind of testing some limits just a little bit, not a well, lot. Isn't Mar- Marvel's Disney, though, isn't it? Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's it right there. I mean, I think I don't that wanna... that's that's the pinnacle. When like when when it's the that's the pinnacle of formula. Basically, oh, yeah. like it's the formula company. I mean, that's what they do. The magic. It's the magic. It's the magic. The magic well, of Disney. And I don't want to get well, into it. Yeah. But the magic formula. The magic formula. Yes, I 100%. think more more than anything, that's what they figured out long, long ago. More right? like it's the like... sorcery, am I right? But well, like, I mean, I don't want to get into it because it was under dire circumstances that we had to, we had to pretty much let my daughter watch Frozen for the first time. Yeah, and like it was cool because she was not really that into it. So I was like, kudos to you. And actually, it's kind of interesting because she acted the where she reacted the way that I would react, where she was like, okay, cool, I know who Elsa is now. Because she's right. seen Elsa everywhere. And like her little friends talk about Elsa from Frozen. She's like, I don't know who Elsa is. And so she saw Frozen. I was like, what did you think? She's like, I liked it. She's like, I know who Elsa is now. So I can talk to my friends about who Elsa is. Like, so she's like me where she's like, okay, cool. I've seen the movie. Now I can go talk to people about it. Like, but well, I was this, watching. This is weird that you say that because that just happened with my daughter, my six-year-old daughter. Really? Where, where she was like, oh, they're singing this. All my friends are singing this song from this new new. I think it's Encanto or whatever. They're singing this song from this new movie. What movie? Which it, it's called Encanto. Like it's it's the the en- music is. Here's the crazy thing. Encanto. The music is Encanto, <laughs> like Enchanted. The 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 music is done by the same guy. Uh, what's what's his name? Uh. Something, something, Miranda, the same guy who wrote and did ha- the Hamilton thing. So you know it's super woke. Uh, right? the, that's it. Juan Manuel Miranda or something oh, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he, he yeah. did the music of this movie. And because these little girls around her were singing these songs, she said, I, I got to watch this movie because I don't know the song. So I need to be able to know the song because they're singing the song around the school. I mean, just the same thing happened watch listen to let it go from a certain lens and it's like oh yeah and so it's just like total total whatever and they will face judgment for that and that's oh yes we should probably get to where we are uh, yes into and which i don't mind because i think father wasn't here for last last yes conversation so i think that was father kind of weighing in on some of the stuff that we talked about last week whether well, he can knows we, can, it, I, I, so I have something to say about where we are. And can I say maybe, something is, real quick? Can I yes, just say something about real quick please. about where we are? Aesthetically, okay, I had picked Keanu Reeves as Prince Namor. 
aesthetically. No. I, I think he looks like him. I think he looks like him. I'm not saying that he Andrew, would do his job. You should have said anything. No. No, <laughs> I stand by that. I stand by that. No. He looks like him. How could you say that after I brought up Daniel Day Lewis? Well, he's, okay. No, he's so much darker. Namor's so much darker. Keanu Reeves is not, no. Daniel Day Lewis, he would have been good. Prince he's, Namor. He would have been great. Great. He's a, he's a little too old now to do it, but he would have been great. Of course he would have been great. He's yeah. Daniel Day-Lewis. He's he great in great. everything, actually. But, well, I mean, yeah, of course. I don't would. think there's... Uh, what movie has he not been great in? Uh, See? Well, no, I'm not going to argue that. I don't, I'm not going to argue that. Because it's like saying, like, it's like, I, I don't know. It, I'm, obviously, it's great. But, I mean, I'm saying, like, you could you could put Daniel Day Lewis in a lot of roles. Be like he'd be fantastic, that's, but that that th- 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 means there could be someone else that could probably do that. Like Keanu Reeves bulking up and getting a, t- a good suntan, I think he would pull off Prince Namor. There was talks of that being the plot of Black Panther two of Namor flooding Wakanda, because that's Ooh. yeah that's he does that, that later on, yeah. which yeah, is yeah. right. But anyway, okay. So so I want to say about where so where we are. So where are we? Uh, we, we we did um, ascend it into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. Now, I know that we want to go to judgment. I know that we've been wanting to do that, but I just have a question, Father, and maybe we can knock this out, but it seemed like the perfect opportunity because it is a term that comes up constantly, and it's a term that I know is also uh, brought up in iconography, and that is glory. To Mm -hmm. understand this term, because we say it all the time, Mm -hmm. and poignantly, also, I saw it, and it's every time it's like nails on a chalkboard, I get this real icky feeling when, and I didn't know why, and then I saw sort of the background of it, but when I've been hearing people saying, and like, you know, the Ukrainians saying, glory to Ukraine, glory to our armed forces all and supposedly like well the jewish president of an orthodox country saying glory to something other than god is was very weird to me but then i saw that glory to ukraine being used as a slogan popularly is actually relatively new and it comes from maidan and it was like some of the things that the like the ex- extremist banderites or whatever were th- so it came like out of this group of sa- that that glory to ukraine mm-hmm. became like it and it almost sounds like it's a it's it's purposely like there's something there that's a break from the church but to be able to talk a little bit about like glory i know that glory is represented in icons sometimes like what is what is glory how do we so he shall come again is it with glory or in glory like in glory. Help, help in glory. So how do we, what is glory? How do we understand glory? Hmm. Well, the first thing is, is that I think this is really important to kind of um, frame it in this way. Um, if we really want to understand glory and we have to make a distinction and, and understand why it's problematic to be talking about glory um, as if God could share glory or a type of glory with a nation or a country or anything else. Um, that, there, that there has to be a qualitative like distinction. Um, and so, you know, glory, in fact, this would be kind of like an interesting thing. Uh, Andrew, if you want to pull up, uh, Let's see what I can pull it up. Okay, let's see what Webster's says, how Webster's defines glory. Okay. Let me uh let me pull it up here. Because this understanding of of glory, I think we we you know will kind of go through an apophatic lens of what it's (laughs) of definitely when we talk about God and glory, what it's not. All right, I've got uh, I've got Oxford. I've got Oxford here. So let's see. Here we go. Uh, high renown or honor won by notable achievements, magnificence or great beauty, or glory as a verb to take pride or pleasure in. 
I can find more definitions here. A thing that is beautiful or distinctive, a special cause for pride, respect, or delight. The splendor and bliss of heaven. Mm -hmm. Praise, worship, and thanksgiving offered to a deity. Mm -hmm. A luminous ring or halo, especially as depicted around the head of Jesus Christ or a saint. Mm -hmm. They actually got it better than I thought they were going to. Yeah, and, and actually this is interesting because to me, it's even more of an indictment of it being used in mm. a kind of nationalistic secular term, right? Because now you start seeing that like, uh, to make it simple, people who should know better mm -hmm. aren't, aren't doing better. You know what I mean? And um like the you know slava ukraine thing that that's kind of like floating and all that stuff like, well i think that and they have it over here on the right glory is used to describe the manifestation of god's presence as perceived by humans mm -hmm. according to the abrahamic so the manifestation of god's presence as perceived by humans how could you say glory to ukraine mm -hmm. for that and so the thing is is like when you have a country that's been steeped in orthodox worship right that's been steeped in the the worship of the you know, the, the true god right for centuries and then to move in such a way and what i mean i don't mean just in regards of like the hashtag right but also understanding like what's at stake someone may, someone may argue like they don't understand what's at stake but we're seeing the reality of what's happening in regards of this isn't the national aspect of this, the international aspect of this, the geopolitical aspect of this. It's serious in regards of potential, you know, nuclear war, world war for sure. But the real problem is the, and we, I, we might have talked about this before, but the spiritual and ecclesiastical ramifications of it. That's, that's really what the devil's after. And the setup now in regards of, and again, I, I hate to go there because I'm sure some people are going to lose their minds on it, but it really is. A, it's just one more. It's one more piece of a mosaic of this Antichrist forming. Right, because now you have. Um, see, the thing with the thing that we've been struggling with. Oh, sorry, I got to plug in my computer's about to die. Um, the thing that we're, we've been struggling with is this um, this attempt to deify the victim. This is Gerard, right? Like the attempt to deify the victim. And the attempt to deify the victim, I would submit to you, is this kind of like deeply moving, uh, like moving deeply, right, on a, on a subconscious, and even like, you know, spiritual level of, of presenting, fertilizing the bed for Antichrist. And, and, and here's what I mean by that. The victim narrative as it's being presented to us, right? Because that, that's like the big shift, right? If you want to look at wokey stuff, whatever, that's like the big shift that's been happening is this deifying and the upholding of the victim in a way that broader society has never really seen it before, right? And now it's moved from the singular kind of isolated, quote unquote, uh, minority population, right? Specifically, let's say African-Americans, queer, right? All, like there's, there's a reason why all these things are lining up, right? You now move it to a larger, let's for fractal. It scales up now, Ukraine. Ukraine is this like victim, okay? And just like in all those other instances, right? It's like, okay, let's talk about the struggle. The, let's talk about black struggle, okay? Boom, 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 that's fine. But the problem with it is, and this is where a lot of people get it right, but they, but they, they miss the, the, the broader nuance, which is we talk about black struggle in regards of like, you know, oppression of racism, Jim Crow. But like, you could not talk about the reality of what's happening within black neighborhoods of like, 
trigger word, trigger warning, black on black crime and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Like you couldn't talk about that because what happens is if you talk about that, it undermines the victim narrative. Are you following me? And so right. the victim has to be pure. The, yes. victim ha- the victim has to be pure. Now, wow. let, let oh, everybody. That's anti- that's, oh, that's it. Yes, that's why it's yes, Antichrist. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's yes, why yes, it's Antichrist. Because yes. I was about to say, everybody file away in the back of your head with what Ben just said, or what Sabrina just said, right? It has to be pure. So here's the thing like, track it now. Let's go into queer LGBTQ rights, right? Like, you can't talk about the crazy high domestic violence rate among homosexual and lesbian couples, especially lesbian couples. Like, you can't talk about that, right? You can't talk about all of the dysfunction that's in there, right? You can't talk about it, right? Why? Because if you do, then it takes away the purity of the victimization, right? Now, let's get into Ukraine. No, like if we talked about this the last time, I think, right? But like, no one wants to talk about the Nazification. No one wants to talk about all kinds of stuff that was going on in there. Not even, not even just with the Azov Battalion. Like, there's all kinds of stuff happening there, right? And nobody wants to talk about, you know, this is this isn't a rah rah Russia thing, you know. But nobody wants to talk about like, hey, uh, you know, the West has a thing about breaking promises, you know, and like the repeated you know, pushing on boundaries and all that stuff. I mean, people don't want to hear about, they don't want to hear about what we did in 99 with Kosovo. People don't want to hear about that, right? But like- Talk they, about bombing hospitals with children in I there. mean, forget about it, man. Forget about it. But like, let me just make this point real quick so hopefully it'll, it'll kind of turn the dime for everybody. It's not just that we don't want to talk about it. We can't talk about it. And the reason why you can't talk about it is because- the spirit that is ushering this in, in it, it's a spirit. It's the same reason why, it's the same reason why early on, this is one of the things that like, kept me really, I, I, I was tempted to fall under the spell. Like a lot of people were with COVID, everybody was right. Like, okay, what, what's happening? But one thing that really kept me from just falling in besides my wife, I mean, my wife, God bless her. She, she smelled a rat the whole time. Yeah. And I got to give her props. Like she kicks butt. Our whole community should thank her because she's the one who really was like. I've been saying that recently, the last couple of weeks, because my wife has been getting pretty close with your wife, father, and I won't go on too long. But like, yeah. my wife was talking about. She's like, "Oh yeah, but party was like onto it from the beginning." I was like, "So she's like this huge, but you'd never know it. You, you'd you would never like know, know it. it. Yeah. She's, I mean, everyone needs to thank her, right? Yeah. She's the one who's like, this is, something's wrong from from the beginning." Like yeah. never once did she buy into it. Never once, right? Where I was falling into it because like whatever. So anyways, but but let me let me get to this point, right? But one of the things that I did notice was that we couldn't talk about it. I would I remember really early on being like, why are we talking in hushed tones about, about this? That wasn't something that was being engendered explicitly through the media. Cause I'm, I wasn't like crazy media head at that, in that sense, right? But like, there was a spirit that came into the world. You, you could not talk about it, right? Why? COVID was all about victimization. It was all about needing a pure victim. I don't care what you say now. <laughs> like, I'm just telling you, like COVID was all about the, this, what has happened was moved into the world, all these things. And that's why people who are into COVID, 99.9 are going to be people into Ukraine because it, it's this spirit, right? That needs to have a pure victim, right? And Ukraine now on a national level is that pure victim. And that's why you can't question it. You can't even talk about it, right? And all the things of people shutting down, if you're Russian or all that stuff, that's all kind of like after the fact, because before that even happened, you couldn't talk about it in the same way you couldn't talk about COVID, the same way you couldn't question, you know, what's really happening in black communities, you know, why you couldn't really question the, the LGBTQ narrative. It's why George same. Floyd might not have been like as perfect as people say. All of that, all of that, because the spirit there needs to have, it, it will, it, it, it needs to guard that it needs to guard the deception because that's where it's that's where it's hinging. Because once you realize 
there is the purity of the victim isn't there, then the antichrist mask begins to, un, like, to, to fail. Because that, that's the thing is, Christ is the pure victim. And only Christ is the pure victim. And everything else, that's why it's anti-Christ, trying to move in the place of it. And that's why, I'm just going to say it, if, even the, if possible, even the elect. That's why when you see so many people, so many Orthodox falling for all this stuff, it's just like, people should really be paying attention. Because this thing, I, hopefully this is making a lot of sense to people. Because on, on a real high or deep level, however you want to look at it, I think this is the thing that's been happening. And the, and the thing that's happening for just the average Joe, who's just like, well, I guess, yeah, Russia just shouldn't have done whatever. Like, well, I get, like, when you watch that first, everyone's like, whoa, this is crazy. Like George Floyd, right? Kneeling on the neck, right? Boom, this is crazy. And yeah, it's crazy. Don't get me wrong. Like, this is part of the problem is you can never really talk about it because you couldn't, because as soon as you start talking about it and like questioning something, like if you question the riots and, and like all of the stuff, you're automatically like a clanman who's like, yeah, kill him, kill. I'm glad he well, kneeled the, on his the, neck. the mostly peaceful protests where there's things burning in the background, like, oh, this has been mostly peaceful and the fi it's it's on fire. It's like a meme. Right. It's like a Saturday Night Live skit, right. but right. it's like. Even I'm sitting here and things are on fire, but I'm like, oh, these protests have been, you know, they're peaceful. It's like, what? what? <laughs> right. And so, and so the thing is, is getting back to the, the thing tonight, and I think this is part of the thing is, what do they want? Yes, they want to always undermine the place of God in the hearts of men, for sure. But they also, I mean, one aspect of this is, is glory is glory right is that the part of part of understanding antichrist from my perspective right and this is again i'm i'm just speaking in the heart right now right it's it's about what's really at stake here right because i think part of the reason why the, the antichrist situation is so scary and dangerous is because even those who want to be on top of the antichrist thing it, it's still all intellectual you know i can think about certain people in the YouTube stuff, in the YouTube world, who they'll do really great high analysis on things like this, but it's all in the head. There's no heart. And, and this is Father Sarah from Rose, right? Like those who have only an intellectual under apprehension of Christ, they're going to be the first to fall for any Christ, right? He talks about those who are only into vestments and censors and, and all the glitter and all that. It's like, they'll be the first to fall for Antichrist because it isn't, it isn't aesthetic. It isn't an intellectual grasping of it. It's the heart. Christ reaches for the heart and Antichrist cuts off the heart by going all for the senses, all for the gates, all in the head, all in the intellect, right? And that's the thing. Only a rational person is going to go along with, with you know, I'm being facetious, right? Only a rational person is going to clearly go along with Ukraine because look, can't you see that Russia invaded them for no reason? And can't you see that, you see what I'm saying? Can't you see that the Blacks are these helpless animals who can't help themselves? Can't, can't you see that? Can't you see that love is love? And these people, do you see what I'm saying? You can't question anything. And, and I think this is, the, this is the problem because you know what I find interesting about God, about Christ? He puts up with people's questioning all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you understand what i'm saying whereas the devil like he will snuff you out like the devil that's one of the ways you can always tell you start sniffing around the devil and kind of like what's well, behind the curtain fierce and fast you're like dealt with right that's always a warning sign to me christ is so humble he's like yeah i mean if you want to believe that's fine <laughs> you know what i mean like like he's so humble and and but at the same time his meekness reveals his confidence because he knows like the truth doesn't need to put itself off in, in an ostentatious way exactly whereas this victimization like the fight for to maintain their purity it's purely that's virtue signaling the ostentation is of it like it it's not a it's not a it's not the christian spirit it's not the spirit of, of, of jesus christ right 
So that spirit really is, is where I think we can start. The bad spirit, forgive me, is where we can start really trying to understand, well, what is God's glory then, right? Because God's glory, um, and this is where um, the onion video and some of the things that we've been talking about for a long time begins to like stop short because again, the, the face melting and all that, God just can't help that, right? He just gets about that because his glory is, is, his glory is, period. Like that, which is a very different thing than the self-conscious, uh, insecure, antichrist, demonic spirit, which is, I want you so far away from, from the, the house of cards I have set up you know what I mean? It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Don't, don't, don't look there. Don't, don't, don't come look, close to this. Don't look there. Yeah. Well, that's this, this is the whole disinformation. This is the whole, we're going to yeah. cut this person off because they're saying these. And it's like, wait a minute, are, are, can they, can they, and then it comes true. Like, yeah. as we saw over the last two years where everybody's like, it's a joke. It's now become a joke that what was it? Well, wasn't that a conspiracy theory? Well, didn't you kick that person off? Like, Twitter, didn't you ban Zero Hedge for saying something about, you know, Hunter Biden's laptop or whatever? And then it comes out like, oh, yep, guess it was. You know what he, I mean? Or like, Because <laughs> he, here's the thing that I've been thinking a lot about lately is like, it's caused me to kind of give myself some pause because it's Lent also too. And like we're all supposed to be, we're all supposed to really stop and reflect more. Um, and we all fail. I know I do. Um, but I think one of the things that you see, not I think, one of the things that you do see in regards of God acting in the world um, is that this truth will be, everything that is hidden will be revealed. That it, 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 there isn't that anxiety for it to be uncovered. It's going to come out. And, I, and I'm just saying that because this thing with like, oh, you know, the laptops, what was conspiracy theory a year ago is like just back now. But if you notice, and part of it is just the evil, just like the demons, they undo themselves. Where people are just, you know, these outlets and these people are just, they're, it's, it's a really thinly veiled attempt to, oh yeah, you know, we want to find some credibility before we completely like get pulled. So we'll like, oh yeah, the, the laptop's real. Okay, whatever, next story. You know what I mean? No, no repentance, right? There's no retraction. There's no be like, hey, you know what? We were wrong. Like there, there's, there's no repentance individually and in, uh, institutional and even like broader social level, right? These, I've been thinking a lot about this. This is a thing. Like now at this point, we've had, we've had a couple kind of like pan-Orthodox gatherings, you know what I mean? And, you know, people are like, yeah, like why do we even not meet, you know? And some of us will chuckle, whatever. Uh, but it's like, there's so many people it, it, and I, I, God forgive me, you know, it, it, it's really for me a thing like, I'm not even, I don't even really care about me, whatever. But there, there at this point now can legitimately be some people like, hey, you know what? Ring, ring, ring. Um, hey, can we get together? Because you, you know what? Like, I just realized, like, I was wrong about this thing. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 like it's that simple. It's like, hey, um, yeah, I I I I got my you know triple booster, or whatever, and I still got it, and and then maybe it, and because I I I hope that some people are thinking it's like you got your triple boost, you you know separated from people, like all the thing that everyone went through. Okay, that's fine, right? But hopefully, people are think some people are thinking to themselves like all this wasn't worth it because it wasn't real. But, but here's the problem, the doubling down. We, and we, we always talk about this, right? But the doubling down, but like we're at this point where it's just things are, it's, it's I don't want to say pathetic, but it's, it's sad. Like uh, in a real sense of just like, yes, it isn't even really up for debate now. It, it's truly at a point where I'm sure in two weeks we'll see it, we'll hear about an SNL skit where people are like, what was that even about? Like, you know what I mean? Talking about like COVID and everything else. It's like, 
it's just, it's so much easier just to say, you know, I'm just going to act like that never happened versus, hey, like repentance, right? Like this was, I got caught up in something and this is wrong. Let me try to, let me try to salvage some of the wreckage from, from the chaos and, and the intoxication. I don't know. There's deaths in China again. So, you know, well, that it's, but these are all the opportunities for people to not repent. And I think that it's almost worse than the thing. So like so much of the thing was done in ignorance or fear or any of that, but like at this point, it's not ignorance or fear. It's just the desire to, to what, to, to Save avoid face? repent. It's not even saving face because you're not even like, no, nobody everybody knows that it's like what it is right it's it's i don't even it, it's it's hard to even know because it's about themselves everybody else knows it's a joke you know but it's, a, it's, it's just themselves far be it for me cyprian i apologize but i don't th- i don't see much of anybody thinking that that this was not a big deal like think of how many people the the main narrative i've been hearing is um from the limited access I have to things is that, well, you know, yeah, maybe we will react but imagine all the people who would have died if we hadn't have done this, like think yeah, of I all call the that Cyprian's people. rabbit's foot. I've been calling that Cyprian's <laughs> rabbit's foot for about a year. And, and it's, it started with the tweet where I said, Oh, I, I said a rabbit's foot, a lucky rabbit's foot is, is safe and effective for keeping you out of the hospital. When for a virus that only puts a tiny percent of people in the hospital. Yeah. And it's like, the statement is, well, yeah, you know, you, you got sick, but think of how sick you would have been without yeah. that lucky rabbit. 100%. You know what it's I mean? Like like, <laughs> it was like an episode of the Simpsons where they up the bear patrol because one bear got in. It's, so the, bear taxes. it's the bear patrol. <laughs> and so then Lisa is like, isn't that kind of weird reasoning dad? And he's like, what does that mean? And he's like, well, say this rock i would tell you this rock keeps away tigers but i mean here i'm holding the rock have i been attacked by a tiger and homer's like hmm, lisa i'd like to buy your rock and like <laughs> like gives her money and takes the rock and it's just like well yeah but i mean i don't i don't know i mean i've been wrong about well, it was a big deal obviously well no, no 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 what happened what happened was a big deal but i just don't think I don't think society we're not coming to grip with grips with what happened i think that's really what that's really what it is is that oh oh i'm having a different conversation that's my fault yeah i wasn't paying attention yeah sorry yeah no 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 what happened was a big deal like the last two years was a gigantic deal it was like a, a but i have this weird feeling like it's going to be pushed somehow it'll be pushed under the rug i have this very very weird feeling that I'm going to be having a conversation with my daughters like 20 years from now about the last two years. And like, why did, tell us again, dad, like, why did we come to Saipan? Like, what was the whole thing? Like what was going on? And it's like, yeah, there was this, and I'll tell them the whole story and they'll just be like, no one talks about that. Yeah. Like we don't, we didn't, I, yeah, well, you would think we'd learn about that in school. Like, that's so weird. Nobody talks about that. I wonder, Father, if that was, there could be multiple meanings and far be it for me. I have no idea. If St. Paisios's prophecy about this will be the one seal that begins multiple seals, mm-hmm. you know, we kind of thought maybe that is the, but also like maybe this is like, you need to swallow this because in order to swallow this, you're going to start swallowing this. And in order to swallow this, you're going to have to swallow this as well. Like, yeah. I wonder if like, I don't know. Far be it from yeah, me. No, 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 no. There's, I mean, there's no doubt. And like, I, I, I'd like to say that's what we've been saying and not out of just like, oh, because I know, but just maybe even out of like, not wanting to just wanting to play it safe and not be so like absolute, like, yep, this is what it is. But like, it was never so much of like, it's the seal or like the mark, let's say, sure. but definitely like, the it's definitely the spirit of the mark like i've been saying that for for whatever and you and that's more true than ever i mean like none of like none of us those who are here right again being able those moments right not being able to go into a store literally without a mask 
You know what I mean? Like seeing stories, hearing stories of people like being assaulted for not wearing a mask. Um, and then just carrying that on now with like, you know, passports and jab passports and all that stuff. Like, like what what's happened there is definitely like, you know, the the on ramp to and 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 this is the thing. Um I think now we're definitely I think definitely now with certain things that have happened, like Ukraine starting to roll out like their their version of whatever like um omni pass whatever that they were trying to prototype in Africa, right? Where everything's wrapped into one. Like all like all of those all those movements we're seeing now being so easily implemented. Like no one's batting, no one's no one has batted an eyelash about like, oh yeah, Ukraine is rolling out like if you want to get, you know, wartime um uh, benefits you gotta have your it's tied up with your with your COVID pass whatever like no one's batting an eyelash about that but you know two years ago we were talking about that coming and it's like no that'll never happen. I mean I remember having a conversation with with a person you know an, an ex person who's like no that'll never happen I'm like yeah, are you sure about that yeah hey, you, you sure there'll never be a passport you know that'll never happen it's like it's already it's already happening like we all knew this right but but the key thing is the spirit underneath it. And, and here's the thing, the spirit underneath it, the spirit guiding it operates in such a way that like, don't look over here, you know? Don't, don't look at that. You can't, you can't, you can't taint or sully this, this, this faux purity, if you will, right? Because everything is a good reason. That, that, and I want to get back to that because everything has to have a good reason, has to stay pure because that's that's this antichrist glory, right? This 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 is where that weird kind of like transcendent divine thing comes into play because people they mistake it, right? The whole Volks Volks will believe Volks Deo, like the whole like well, the voice of the voice of God is the voice of the people, you know what I mean? And this conflating, right? this conflating of the popular narrative, it must be the right thing. How does that work? Give us Barabbas. That's yeah, how, for real. That's how, that's how it works. Give us Barabbas, right? And so um, I, this is the thing that I've been watching in regards of I've been thinking about this a little bit. Um, but number one, you, you reduce everything down to the level of villain and superhero, white hat, black hat. You condition people for that binary thing, right? We talked about this, you know, um, a couple months ago, that Hegelian dialectic, right? It's just like you, you get you get it down to red and blue, black and white, right? And you get people conditioned in that sense. Um, and then once once you're there, then you just have to maintain the the proper, you know, kind of narrative constructs to to guard that that purity of the victim or that purity now it's the purity of the victim but like you you just flip the dialectic you know speaking of the royal path and you we let's put it in a conservative perspective right like you got to maintain that moral purity right and that fault that that's not the christian ethic either mm -hmm. right that that moral purity right that's nazism <laughs> all right so let, let's 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 look at what this narrow path looks like. And so, again, we always have to watch out for the you know sons of Peterson and all that stuff. That that they can always pop up at any moment, right? But this reality of of that spirit is it's it needs to maintain a sense of of purity in this sense, right? Because that's how it's mimicking Christ, right? Um, and on the left hand side, it's victimhood. But to the right, it'll be it'll be a moralistic purity. And 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 the Ukraine thing easily falls into that because it's like Ukraine's a victim, but they also have the moral high ground. You, you see what I'm saying? And this is where you're able to to rope in quote unquote conservatives and you know liberals or whatever, but that now over the Ukraine thing, because it's like, well, clearly, you know, they're being invaded and all this and that.
Um, guys, we're stopping the next Hitler. So there's yeah. that. Yeah. And I mean, and it's also and it's also removed. I think that's one of the interesting aspects of uh, why why I think this has more power than COVID had. COVID, the the, the COVID narrative was that it affected everyone. And so it was very, very hard to, to have the true pure victim narrative because you were constantly, I mean, there was constantly this thing of like, oh, well, this person got sick. And then the question was like, well, oh, but they're super unhealthy, right? Mm -hmm. So like, oh, but we can see like all these things that they had done and like they got sicker than this or they did these sorts of, you know, they would talk about comorbidities and all of these sorts of things, you know? And so there wasn't this level of purity. Whereas when you start to introduce, I'm talking specifically for Americans, this is obviously not going to be true for Eastern Europeans or Russians or anything like that, right? Most Americans have never met a Ukrainian in their life. Mm -hmm. You know, I, have, I knew many in LA, right? Like I hung out with Ukrainians in, in, in LA, but most have never even met a Ukrainian in their life. Never mind have some idea of like the history of the country, even over the last eight years, mm -hmm. right? And so you're able to construct like brand new like tabla rasa this mm -hmm. entire nation this entire group of people who have never done anything wrong who are so good and then throw in the fact that like i mean it's just so apropos that wow you've got the klitschko brothers you know what i mean like these because there there you got like the, the literally like the superheroes from out of like these characters from out of a movie almost right these champion boxers who everybody loved who have phds and you know what i mean are like these super intelligent and oh he's also the mayor and you know and then you've got the television producer who played himself and now oh netflix is running Zelensky's show again servant of the people and and you've got this like blank slate put it on top and it's like of course they could be the victim and there's not even somebody who can say well but what about this this that people they, there's nothing there they have no background. They have no history. And, I mean, I, I, man, yeah. forgive me. I, Go ahead. Z <sighs> Zelensky himself. I mean, he he's the he's the perfect. Every, I mean, I mean, look. I, okay, I'm just trying to make a simple observation. Dogs bark, cats meow. Right. Um. The only thing that he's missing, the only like oppressed minority group that's missing from him is like, it'd be great if we found out he was like a 10th black. You know what I mean? 10th African. Cause you got, everyone knows what I'm saying. Like he falls into a couple very specific category groups that are the untouchables. You can't, you can't name two groups that he's a part of. You can't name them, right? like you can't name them right so he just need we just need to throw throw in a little bit of like yeah i'm related to pushkin somehow like you know what i mean like there's some sort of black in me somewhere and you got your victimhood base like covered and he's just, it's like a it if you guys are following what i'm saying you know it's oh just, i'm following it's just so perfect because it's like you know one one of the big head scratcher things it's like it's so funny watching for those of you who are like don't know what i'm talking about it's like let's just put it this way the nazification quote unquote of ukraine is a real thing and it isn't just quote unquote putin being hyperbolic it's like a real thing and the world thought that way up until this time like we we talked about this a couple of weeks ago right well you can scratch your heads and be like bandera and all this stuff it's like how is it that a country that has such deep nazi kind of like uh, fascination can have, you know, a member of a people group that the Nazis are like really famous for wanting to like exterminate, be their president. How does that work? Right? So if you don't understand what I'm trying to say, like reading in between the lines, like Zelensky being part of a, a certain religious quote ethnic group as top on top of a certain, um, rhymes, I don't know. I'm um, with droolish. <laughs> yes. And and I don't and I don't know if his orientation if that's a if that's an open thing you know but um, I think it's relatively well known. Yeah. So it's like well it, it, it's just it's just funny to me you know and and again well father he's a television producer 
right? So no, like, <laughs> just, just, just roll with that, okay? Like he's a t t television producer, okay? Yeah. So there's, you know, yeah, there's some qu questionable things from a, yeah. a orientation standpoint yeah. in there. Yeah, it's just it, it's so funny too because you're seeing how and and whatever we can we can get into this because uh, I, I'm trying right world path. I'm not trying to fall into the white hat black hat on on our end of things too. But it is just interesting in regards of like, you know, picture Kirill and some of the stuff that he said, which has just blown people's minds because it's just so over the top him talking about like, you know, homosexual cult, homosexuality in regards of a kind of like propagation of it in the way that it's been being a cancer for a culture, like people losing their mind, like, and when I say people losing their minds, let's just be clear. I, I'm not surprised the world lose their minds over it. I'm talking about quote unquote Christians losing their minds over him saying that, right? Like that's part of the problem. Well, these lines of just seeing something be so starkly wrong or right, that's what's so kind of mind blowing too, right? Because the setup in regards of antichrist, it isn't just about having it's just not, it's not simply about trying to preserve this kind of purity of the victimhood. It's also about this, which is something Christ does not do. It's also about making sure that you know who to hate. It's also making sure that you know, you've got to know not only that I'm pure or that this cause is pure or this issue is pure, like purely victim, right? You also need to know who the, you know, who the, who the oppressor victimizer the who oppressor. the victimizer is and you know who does that you know you know who the accuser is mm. that's satan satan's the accuser the accuser of the brethren the see this is yeah. this is one of the, this is one of the ways that you can i submit to discern an antichrist spirit from the spirit of christ 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 as the victim is pure and blameless truly without any hypocrisy without any irony, right? Without any subterfuge, right? But Christ also is never an accuser. He was reviled, but reviles not, as the scripture says, right? But, but, this, but, but he's the judge though. But he is the judge. Not, not the, he doesn't accuse. Nope. And there's a difference judges. between, between yeah. judging and accusing. Cause I can yes. be like, uh, Cyprian, you're mean. And your tacos are no good, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But like that, I'm just throwing out accusations and I, and I can build up a whole case, whatever. But the thing about judgment and, and this is, this is part of what the antichrist has done for generations is to build the case that the judge will be wrong. Huh? Huh? Right. That's why, that's why the, that's why atheism and the materialism, it's, people don't understand it. It is a spirit. Like people can think all they want. I don't care. They can, they can think that they came to those conclusions through, you know, rational discursive thought. They can think that they came through it through education. They, they came through it through their university. They can think all that they want. I don't really care because the fact is, they came to that conclusion from the suggestion of the spirit and they accepted it based upon their own inability to face their sin, to face their own impurity, right? Because what, what separates, Cyprian, what separates you and I as Christians from them? Well, one thing really simply, we say like, oh yeah, I am a sinner. Oh yeah, and God is a crutch. Absolutely, I can't, I can't, I can't do it, right? I acknowledge I need God. I, and I also acknowledge that I want to do things that are evil and wicked and self-serving, but I don't want to do them anymore. That's the only difference. And if that I will be judged. And that, and that, and that God has every, because this is what I hear. You said that and I was like, oh, wow. Like my, 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 the top of my head popped off because I, I've heard from atheists my entire life this refrain and it gets so old even when i wasn't even when i guess maybe i would even call myself an atheist right but it's like would get so old to be like what right does god have to judge me after all he did to the people in the old testament yep yep 
Yep. Like awesome. God doesn't have a right to judge. So if I'm going to be judged, well, God doesn't even have a right to judge me after I'm better than God. Mm -hmm. Look at what he did in the old Testament. And so I just want to go with this because I know it's, it, forgive me. Um, Cause it's not, it's not really a patristic uh, commentary or um, uh, it's not necessarily a patristic exegesis of the scripture that I'm going to present, but just consider it this way, right? Um, and prevail when thou art judged. You ever questioned about that when you're, when you're praying Psalm 50, you're like, what does that mean? Right? Well, I think for us in this time, we can kind of understand stand it and we can understand that portion of scripture in a really unique way because speaking about that's speaking about God, right? God is going to be justified. Like when he makes judgment, it's correct. There's there, there is no subjective, like, well, that's his perspective, and that's the devil's game. Well, I just see it this way. This no, no, no. This is this is my perspective on it. Like Christ is the judge. The second person of the Trinity, Christ is the judge. It's given to him to judge. And when he judges, it will be correct. There won't be any like, well, that's just is my perspective. Because guess what? He is the pure, blameless lamb. He's the only one. Has been and will be the only one who's blameless. And therefore, his judgment is correct and pure. Everyone else's judgment is skewed, tainted distorted right his judgment alone is pure and good and and will be accepted not just on force of his power of who he is right but on but on the truth right if you can if if it was possible because he is truth right but for the sake of what i'm trying to get across if you can if it was even possible to separate the two the personhood of christ from truth as some like objective thing outside of him which it isn't it isn't right I'm trying to get a point across. Ba just simply based on the truth of who he is, his judgment is correct. Because there is no like, I got, I got skin in the game on this one, buddy. Or like, I got a bone to pick, buddy. It, it's not that at all, right? That's, that is one of the key things about Antichrist too, is that reviling, that accusation, that aspect of, any sort of like doubt or any any or any sense of like kind of dubious perception that's not it, it's not there there is no righteousness in that judgment but but he lays it on real thick and i think that's the thing that you see in a, in the material world the laying on of the thick through the propaganda the like facebook profile changing whether it's i got my 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 jab I support Ukraine. You know, I love black people because they're they're helpless victims who can't do any better for themselves. Like whatever it is, right? You gotta lay it on thick. Because if you don't lay it on thick, then people might just get a peek behind the curtain and then God forbid, you know, or Satan, whatever, like it all falls apart. If if that makes sense what I'm saying, you know. No, no, no. I mean, that's uh, I mean. The difference between the two being that like Christ let a man poke his fingers through like the holes in his hand. And like that's that's the difference between the two. That's my one commentary. You go ahead, Cyprian. Yeah, I well, this this is this is actually opening up a lot for me in terms of my understanding. Um, it's like this, it's this whole secondary level and seeing all of these things. The question that it's it's pretty heavy because I'm realizing that that spirit, that spirit of the accuser has so taken over so many people like it, it is their entire it's their culture. And so I, I would I would almost go so far as to say, like, it's well, it's possessing them. There's Can a possession I, there. Give me a I just want to jump in here. because I, I just Please. Know, right. It, it's and again this is why i feel comfortable saying like i'm not saying next weekend right but like we we have entered into an aspect of, of the last times and like yes patristically speaking it's been the last times since the time of john of patmos I, I get that i'm not claiming dates i don't i'm not saying that but what i'm saying is is 
there's a qualitative shift that's happened. Father Peter Hears gave a great insight, and actually he was sharing um, um, really an insight of, um, I think it's Elder um, uh, Athanasios, who's, he's been doing this great series on Revelation. But like, it is in our hymnography where there's so many saints, like St. Saint John uh, of Shanghai is one of them, St. Baisios, you know, this in these latter days, in these latter days, like this is something that's popped up in the hymnography over the last few decades that like that's just not in the hymnography in, in the ancient times, right? So the so the church is led by the Holy Spirit and the church is saying something. Remember the ecumenical councils, the holy scriptures, right? Our hagiography, right? Our iconography, our hymnography. These are all points in which this, the, the Holy Spirit speaks and, and reveals the truth to those within the church. And our hymnography, the church, the church hymnography has been saying something these last few decades, latter, the saint of the latter times, saint of the latter times. Father Peter's gave a great, great um, commentary on that because he's saying like, it's not like there's going to be like, oh, these new latter times. It's like, no, no, some, we've shifted into something, right? And so I want to bring that up because this is one of the things that happened in like, you know, at this point in time, it's all like preaching to the choir, maybe, maybe not, but uh, people are, people are getting it. And, and that's one of the, that's one of the many divides that's happening is that there's people who are in the church, but there's people who are like, something's wrong. There's a, there's a shift that's happened that like, I don't know what it means, but let me try to find out. And once they do find out, everyone's coming to the conclusion, like something's wrong, something's wrong. And it isn't just like our times, right? In regards of like, everyone has war. It's like, no, 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 it's bigger than that, right? But, but here's this other third piece that a lot of us are starting to understand, which is we, I, we need grace. Like, we're not gonna make it through anything. We're not, not, we can't do anything unless God's giving us grace. And that grace, we just came out of St. Gregory of Palm on Sunday, right? The second week of Great Lent, right? And so let me give everybody my real quick homily. Most people probably already heard it, but like the thing about St. Gregory, right? Um, I was sharing this in the homily the other day, but like all the Sundays of Great Lent, they're fairly obvious, right? The first Sunday of Great Lent is um, Triumph of Orthodoxy, the Triumph of the Icon. That's that's easy. You you can get that. If you're Orthodox, you get that. Okay. St. Gregory comes around, and you're like, okay, you know, but like let's just skip St. Gregory. Let's go to the, the uh third week, which is like the cross. Okay, like, okay, the cross is that's the most obvious one, right? But then you you move to St. John Climacus, the the great ascetic writer, right? The latter, okay. Most people have never read the latter, most people don't need to read the latter. But everyone kind of gets it. He's like, oh, that's the book the monks read, right? Okay, great. You get that. That makes sense. Okay, you can see why that would be given a Sunday in Lent, right? That's that's fairly obvious, right? And then St. Mary of Egypt, right? One of the greatest stories of repentance and not the greatest story of repentance. Okay, perfect for Lent. Everyone gets that, right? St. Gregory Palmas, like, okay, so... Why does he get a Sunday in Great Lent? Like, what did he do, right? So most people aren't going to be able to have that conversation about God's essence and energies. Like the average person, the average Orthodox Christian isn't really going to get that. And, that, and that's fine. But what they do need to get is that St. Gregory is like, look, you can't experience God in your head, like ideology and philosophy. You can only experience God in, in, in your heart, in, in, the, in the heart, right? And I think this is so key for us because this is the thing, the antichrist and that antichrist spirit, which will pull people who are in the church. It's already started to pull them away. It hasn't quote unquote pulled them out of the church, but it's definitely pulling them out of the heart into the head. And then if it keeps going, you know, God forbid, it eventually pulls them out, right? Because it grabs them and that faculty, and that's where vainglory resides, right? Vainglory is able to, the vanity of life, vainglory is able to affect people who are pr mostly living in their heads on things, right? Because this idea of 
you can only really be concerned about how other people perceive you if you understand how like what the basis of perception for other people is does that make sense what i'm saying that's not something you understand in your heart per se you have to kind of take all that in through the through the senses you have to take all all that in through that kind of fallen faculty of, of the mind especially now right it's like oh okay like i don't really know it's, i don't really understand the ukraine thing but like yeah russia's mean so i don't want people to think that i'm mean too you know what i mean uh there's a calculation there there's a, there's a calculation yeah that that that's made and so this is really important because again getting back to what I was saying earlier about father Sarah from rose people think that they're going to see the end that they're going to discern it but only those who are living in another world and that other world is only ex the other world the, the narnia that we're talking about the the wardrobe is the heart that's the only way to get into that other world is through the heart and so for many people, unfortunately, many Orthodox, they don't, they conflate the two, right? And so the head is the place where, and, and, and that is the thing. The head, the, that, that portion of us, which is not the heart, that's where, that's where everything is stopping short. And that's where the Antichrist is really working. That, that's where the, that's where all his juju is pointed at, right? It has to be. Because if it gets into the heart, then that portion of us where it goes like, I don't know, I, I can't tell you what's wrong, but I just, I just know something's not right. Yeah, that's where yeah. I live. Because that, that, that's not, that's, that's a, for a lot of us, that was the start of where God began to pull us out of our heads and into our hearts. Because I want to give a rational defense of why I feel this is wrong. Because I don't want to look like a dummy. I don't look like whatever. But that was the first test. Are you willing to look like a dummy? Because, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm, and I'm not being facetious when I say this, right? I'm being really honest, right? But like, watching you, Cyprian, and watching how God was like pulling you out, most people aren't able to like, per, like have that perception and give that analysis and articulate themselves the way you, the way you've been able to, right? So let's, let's just break that down. So many people, maybe a lot of people who just went, went the left hand, right? Or not the left hand in like regards of how we usually understand left hand path, but let's say wokey left, hyper conservative right in this, in this context, right? Most people who fell for all the stuff that's been going on, I imagine they had their moments where they knew something wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? But because I, I encountered them early on. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, who wants to look like that guy? And, and so since, and so this is the thing that I've been finding consistent with a lot of us who woke up. We're like, I don't really know exactly quite yet, but I, but I know something's not right. And I don't care if I look dumb. I'm not, I just, I'm not going to do that. Are, are you following me at all? That's, that's Absolutely. a quality whether someone was, was able to give high analysis and, and articulate their analysis or not. That's the thing that I'm seeing consistent. Like, again, the hero of the day who like, I salute her, like my wife, Papadia Juliana, right? She's not, she wasn't really giving a high analysis. She wasn't giving analysis of what was happening. But her intuition, I dare say her noose was clear enough in a sense where she's like, something's not right and I don't care. Like. And that's the thing about like, she doesn't care about how someone's going to like, someone's going to think she's a, like, she's married to me. So clearly she doesn't care about what people think. You know what I'm saying? So that is like, that's that type of character trait. I think that's also necessary because the cowardice that requ it requires a measure of cowardice to like really care that, well, I'm not fitting in. Or like, I don't want to look like that person. Like that courage that it takes and that trust that it takes big, no, no, this isn't right. You know, that's something that I think is um, a key, a key characteristic. Anyways. Andrew and I talked about this last week, this, the, 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 the fact that having an inner life and a life of prayer and especially a life of Christian prayer, because you're having a dialogue then. 
you know, mm-hmm. like then you're having a dialogue with the Lord. It's like, that's the only thing. Cause even we were talking about this exact idea. Like, it seems to me, that's the only thing that can allow you to stand at the time when, and to speak your truth, not, and not even your truth, the truth right. as received through right. prayer, right? right? That, that the, that's the only way that you will stand and that you, the calculation that you'll be willing to be like, I actually don't care. Mm-hmm. I actually don't care. I'm actually not going to do the calculation because I won't be able to live with myself mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm going to be praying again. <laughs> I'm not going to do something to where every day I have to come back Mm-hmm. and try to justify this in prayer because that's too difficult that's i would rather I, you know i would rather just say okay you don't like me whatever do your thing rather than me have to go and deal with god every day mm-hmm. in prayer i can't do, like i'm not gonna do right. that <laughs> you know I mean? or you can make be you can make like kind of sounding dumb and a little bit a half a step behind be endearing like me that's what I do. I'm like, hey, oh yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not with it entirely. And that's okay. It's all right. I can still probably I talk about Batman, so that's cool. Speaking of which it's, that's it's still at- the truth though. It's still the truth. I think that's the key. Like this is the the live not by lies, you know. This is the the I, just to not to not do that calculation. And I mean Lord knows and, I was doing that calculation for as a, for a living. You know I what mean, I mean? And, and I would just say this, I've mentioned this before, forgive me, you know, from a broken record, but like, look, I'm a terrible priest, but if I could do you one, one, one solid, you know, um, if you can hear my voice, you just need to train yourself as much as you can to not justify yourself and not make excuses for the judgment. Like, don't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't don't do that. Just learn now to just be honest about everything. You'd be like, "Yep, I, I did it," because that that's the greatest skill you can acquire spiritually. It's the less tension in your heart. There's less. You just like let it go. You just yep. like, "Yeah, I did that." Because because the the thing is is like you letting it go. Like, "Yep, I did it." Whatever, and not in the cavalier sense. Not cavalier, like, yep, I did it. Now what? Not like that, right? Yeah. But just like, yes, yep, yep. I'm, I got, I got no defense. This is, you know, I was wrong. Whatever. That is, that is a disposition that can, that can receive and can ask mercy. In the judgment. Everything else, the justification, is just like you know the road to hell, right? Pay with good intentions. Like, no, but I really, it's like. The second you're like, but, you know what I mean? And this is, this is the one thing, like, those of you who are, those of you who are already in, in are have, those of you who are already in a kind of confessing uh, relationship with a confessor somewhere, or those of you out there, if you're catechumens or you, or whatever, let me just give you all, like, just don't, don't make excuses. When you're in confession, just be like, this is what I did. Don't go like, well, you know, I did this, but blah, blah, blah. Like, don't do that because. It's okay. Yeah. And you're only hurting yourself. Yeah. Right. And, and you're only building in that, that tendency and that habit to want to just, and like, when you, when you are in the presence of his glory, it's, it's just going to make things worse. You know, just learn to be like, yep. Yeah, forgive me, Lord. This is where, this is what I did. You know, it's, it's super important and it's super key because that, that tendency to want to, um, that tendency to want to hide behind justification, um, you know, you, there is, you are encountering to some degree, lesser or greater, depending on where you're at, the glory of God in that, in that sacrament. So learn now these, I mean, this so minute and in regards of quantity, not quality, but the quantity of grace, the quantity of glory, right? But also this, there's, a, there's a real veil there for your sake so that you don't just like burst in flames, like, but take that opportunity 
to really develop this practice of being um, able to be in the presence of holiness and to be in the presence of God and just, you know, have a realistic understanding of yourself, have a realistic understanding of yourself. It's funny. Cause like, as soon as you said that thing about, and I'm sorry, I'm going back, you guys are in a flow. So I didn't want to interrupt, but I did have a thought um, that uh, speaking of the new Batman movie and it's in the trailer. So it's not a pre it's not a spoiler at all, but there's a part where this like young politician is talking to Bruce Wayne and she's like, there's a lot more you could be doing for the city. But as far as I can tell, you're not really doing anything. And I was like, what an indication of like the times that like you can go up to some random rich person and be like, you have a lot of money and you're not in my eyes, you're not doing enough with it. You should be doing more. And it's like, those are the kind of thoughts I have where I have to like brush them off or like use them as like a servant, you know, like, you know, yeah, you're right. Like, I'm not doing enough, you know, like I could be doing more, you know, and it's like, um, and then like what someone accused, I don't know, maybe it was, maybe it was Alinsky or whatever was like just accused, called out someone for still continuing to do business in Russia. And it was like, well, excuse me, like, this is a big deal. Like, I can't just shut down, like, whatever 400 like locations down in russia it's like i mean i'm a company i'm going to make money and it's like i mean everyone just kind of ends up looking like an idiot when that happens and so i know we're running out of time so maybe this could be like the topic of next time but i kind of wanted to uh, because with toll houses the toll houses like after death um which i know yeah we instantly don't have enough time to talk about that but like, how is the the accusations differ from judgment, Father? Because we'll face judgment from God and accusations from the enemy. Like, how do those how do those like differ? If you don't have time, then we can just put a pin in that and just go for you know like next time. But I mean, because we'll we'll face judgment, but and we got to be cool with that. But at the same time, like we will be accused. Do you know, are you following me? Am I making sense? Am I able yeah, to? Yeah, I mean, we can, we can definitely come back to that. But I would just say the thing that's really important to understand is that God's judgment is never devoid of love. Mm. Mm. Okay. So one is meant to hurt and one is meant to like help. I don't even know if it's a matter. I don't even know if it's a matter of putting it like that. One's meant to help, it's just it is. Okay. Like God's judgment is, period. Like God's judgment will be, period. God's just like His judgment is what the thing is. Right. As He judge us, that's what we are. That's what we will be. The accusations. You know, I can be like you know, Andrew, you're self-centered and you, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I can throw all this in good. And there may be aspects of truth to that, but the accusation doesn't take into totality who you are. The accusation of you being self-centered doesn't take into account those times when you maybe haven't been self-centered, right? Because there's imperfect. no- imperfect. It's there's, imperfect. It's imperfect. The accusation's there's, imperfect, yeah. And and there's, there's fundamentally, because here's the thing, there's fundamentally this kind of like, if you guys can follow what I'm saying here, right? That remember um, when we were talking about idolatry, right? And taking the part and making it the whole. Well, that same perspective comes with accusation <laughs> too. Accusation is almost a weird way this kind of like, think of caricature on the same, on the same spectrum and continuum as, as idol, right? Because an accusation is a caricature of 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 a person right okay. in the same way that an idol is just an, as an aspect of something but it's presented as the whole the totality of that thing that's idolatry right so accusation is a character as a characterization a caricature it's a caricature excuse me it's a caricature of of a person right it's devoid of love a caricature is this hyperbolic flat snapshot of 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 a person in a moment of time god's judgment is the totality of the person okay that does clear yeah. some things up 
Yeah. Hey, I'm really glad and, I asked that yeah. question. I am too. Speaking of not really caring what people think, because there are times where I say, I sound dang foolish on this podcast, but I'm okay with that. I will sleep just fine tonight. Um, so what, um, okay, here's my question. It's time for my question, the closing question. Because I felt bad. Because last time we were in a fast, I asked about sugar stuff. So I'm going to ask, what is your guys' favorite vegan food? Vegan. Yeah. Or I'm saying vegan, but I really meant Lent friendly. Lenten fair? Lenten. Lenten fair. You know, my wife, oh, Papad, you know, she's the best. Tonight, she made these vegetable pot pie. Oh, my oh, wow. goodness. Vegetable, mm. not vegetable. Vegetable. <laughs> you could it, eat. It was, it was incredible. Pot pie is like my favorite. I'm a big pie man. So, but you man. are a pie man. I, you really are. Really am. Really am. What about you, Cyprian? Well, I will tell you that uh, what I have been grubbing on here has been some really amazing bread made by uh one of the brothers that you know one of the mexican brothers who's uh, mm. who's here that you know who's an amazing uh cook we've talked about him before oh, but man. he made some amazing and it's just like bread it's just a uh, flour water and whatever little bit of salt that's all he did it's like just a like a guadalajara style he made these this bread and i've been like this is incredible he's been bringing it over warm oh. perfect like so and i was like i don't know this is so simple he's like it's just about the way that it's 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 he's like you got to let it sit the right amount of time you got it but the consistency is perfect it's crusty on the outside it's just like you know that's perfectly called? huh you know what that's called what is it love that's mm. it that's what it is <laughs> this is love man it's made with made with love but i have been grubbing on this bread and my kids have been nuts for it so I've been very, very thankful, very, very thankful to have a, uh, an amazing baker sitting around making us good bread for Lent. So, yeah, we've been grubbing That's on it. Lesson. Well, what's yours, Andrew? Uh, I, I don't know what I would have said before this last Saturday, but I went out to a Mediterranean restaurant and for the first time in a long time, I had like really good falafel and I was just like, oh, oh man, I was just like, wow, I forgot. I, I sometimes sleep on Mediterranean food. I always love it. Like, it's like, I, my default tends to be like Hispanic food. And I'm like, okay, yeah, if I want food, I want Hispanic food or, you know, sometimes some other stuff makes its way in there. But I, and I sometimes sleep on Mediterranean food. And then I always go back to it. I'm just, why do I not eat this? Like all the time? Like, it's so yummy. It's really good. Like, it's really good. The place I went to is not my favorite of the Mediterranean places here. But they it's do Greek, falafel. Lebanese? What is it? Uh, well, I don't know. Well, it's Jerusalem Cafe, so um, probably. Yeah, I don't. I don't some, know what they're claiming. Of. I don't know what they're exactly claiming. I think they're probably claiming to let's make enough of this stuff so white people like me will eat it. Right. Whereas it's not too terribly ethnic. It's just got that I mean, little like hint of spice to it. But I'll tell you what, it's it's always people at you know the kids ask me. I'm like. How many times are you going to ask me what my favorite food is? But God bless them. They just want to make conversation with their dad. But it's Mediterranean. I mean, it's the food. Yeah. To me, the definition of what's your favorite food, I, it, it has to be something because I love, 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 love barbecue, right? Okay. Mm. I love, love, love like a bird. I, there's all kinds of stuff I love. But could I eat it every day for every meal and like survive and like be like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm totally happy. No, I can't eat Mediterranean food. I could eat it every day, every meal, rest of my life, and I'm good. I think I could too. And I think every, I would, day, every meal, rest of my life, I'm good. I think I would even take that over Hispanic food because, oh, for sure. Like, mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, speaking for me, because like I just love it so gosh darn much. But like, I think I would get tired of it eventually. But Mediterranean, I'm not sure I would. Because one, it's, it's, there's enough to do with it. I mean, I, it's some joke. It's just like a guy goes to a Mexican restaurant and he's like, 
uh, what's a burrito? He's like, well, it's meat and cheese wrapped in a sauce, wrapped in tortilla covered in sauce. Oh, okay. Well, what's an enchilada? Well, it's Same meat thing. and cheese wrapped in a tortilla covered in sauce and cheese. And it's like, okay, well, what's a tamale? Oh, uh, well, it's meat wrapped in like, you know, corn shell, you know, and it's just like, okay, well then what's a Jimmy? Oh, it's all that, but you just deep fry it, you know, yeah. it's, it's like, okay. So, you know, it's like five ingredients. Yeah. And it, it's wonderful. God love it. I mean, it's, it's really good stuff, but at the same time, you know, enough at some point, you know, I'm just kidding. I love Hispanic food. Um, all right. Well, um, I think that's all I got. And by the way, I'm just going to end this with this, that I don't think <laughs> you guys, but, but I don't think Marvel has weak villains. I'm just saying there's a bunch of them that I forget about all the time. I'm just like, oh, no, wait. Marvel has great villains. DC has weak villains. No, I don't think DC has weak villains at all. I oh, think okay. DC overall has much, many more good villains. Okay. Like, right. I just think so. I just think that there's a symbiotic relationship. There's a, there's a, an inverse relationship between more of DC's characters to their villains, which make a good villain than Marvel does. Marvel, you just get like a good, like a, like a, like a, like, and what, what is the relationship between Dr. Doom and Mr. Fantastic other than they're both geniuses and one is kind of a self-righteous jerk and the other one's kind of a self-righteous that's a, jerk. That's the, you're actually making a good, I, I see the point that you're making there. The opposite, they're more of a whole, they're more of a whole with each they, other. They they're exist not on the same, things. They exist on the same coin while like Marvel villains, like it's not a one for one because obviously you have a lot of villains that do like Captain America and Red Skull. Like they are diametrically opposed to one another. I mean, you have mm -hmm. ultimate good and you have ultimate bad. Hal Jordan, I mean, his ultimate villain is Sinestro, fear versus will. You know, it's mm -hmm. so that's that's all I was trying to say. I love I see the point you're making. I love I, 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 I mean, I of my top that. five favorite villains of all time. I mean, Doctor Doom and Red Skull are up there right away. And then you've got Green Goblin, blah, blah, blah. Ad nauseum. And trust me, it is ad nauseum because I will keep going and going and going and going. So anyway, okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think next week we've got a topic, but I would like to do another Q&A before too long because I thought that the last one went well, and I've been seeing questions pile up. Um, I don't check the comments too often. And by the way, last week, I stand by everything I said. I'm just going to say that, especially about Star Wars, I stand by everything I said. I cursory glanced through the comments and I was like, oh boy, people have some opinions about this. <laughs> and that's fine. You guys can have those opinions. I disagree. I stand by everything I said. Those are great movies. And psh, I don't know what you guys want. It's, oh, someone was like, at least the prequels gave us new worlds. I was like, no, don't get me started. Okay. But some well, one one thing I will say uh, related to last week. Last week was the first week that we got. So we got accepted for um, video on Spotify. So we're like Joe Rogan now. So now on Spotify, you can check out the show either in video or audio. Because I know a lot of people wanted to be able to turn their phone off and use it like regular Spotify. Now you can do that. But you could also watch the video if you want to boycott YouTube. Um, you can uh, watch the video on Spotify now. So we're basically Joe Rogan. We're that's Joe cool. Rogan now. All yeah. right. That's cool. So from here on out. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Well, thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>